mess around and he goes live. Check me. Look at this guy. This is Alien Nick right here. Our glycerin chili. That's sweet. Our stacks. Our stacks by Grab Labs. These things come apart. Mm-hmm. You stack it together. They all come apart. A little disappointing here in Vegas because in the past we'd go to the dispensaries and they have big 420 events. So, of course, you can't do that this year, but we're going to do it here at home. Jaway. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, in the past we went actually, <coughs> excuse me, we, um, one year we went and we stood in line for like two hours. It was freezing cold. Why is it always cold on 420? I just realized that it is always cold on 420. Remember that one year when we stood out there for two hours? I know. Oh, jeez. Because they opened at, uh, I want to say it was like 3 a.m. Uh -huh. But you had to get there before then. So we were outside. Uh, like So I think we got there at like midnight. And we thought we were going to be, you know, pretty... You know, and towards the front of the line. But no, there have been people who've been camping out even longer than that. Oh, jeez. Because the first hundred people or something got um, this free bonus thing. <laughs> but guess what? We ended up being number 99. Remember that? Uh-huh. We were like, yeah! We couldn't believe it because we thought, oh, man, we didn't make it in time. Because there have been people with their, like, tents out there, basically. Yeah, so, crazy. It was crazy. They give good deals, but... <coughs> uh, I guess this year they're doing it. You can get delivery, but you know it's not. It's the not same. the same. Yeah, not the same. Let's go in there, and uh, it was fun. You always met people. We we always meet this one guy. He met us in the cave. His name was Mark, and then we met him again at the fort. Like like we he came up to the cave. It was the coolest thing we had on Periscope. If anyone remembers from back then, and then we ran into him again at the four twenty event. He's a nutball, that guy. He brings a little, what is that little thing he has? That is the coolest little I don't instrument. Even know what that's called. He has this tiny little like guitar like thing. It's a little dinky mm -hmm. one. All right, are we, are we lighting this or what are we yeah, doing? Yeah, we'll go ahead. You said you were getting a video. Is it already going? It's already going. Oh, I've been waiting. I was wondering. Y'all were probably like, what is she talking I've been waiting thinking Jad Rich was doing something. Yeah, no, we got it all going. Okay. Okay. We got it all going now. We got it all going. Well, I don't even know where to put this. May I put it right here for you guys? Get this baby going. You don't want to get that chair out of there? Well, no, I'm going to be like... You kind of like it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know. Here. You kind of like it there. Yeah, for a minute. I'll put it here. Can you guys see this? Oh, can this camera see? Yeah, kind of block it a little bit. There yeah. you go. That's okay. We're going to try and just do this and then we'll get out of the way. And then we'll move out of the way. It's 420. You know I'm gonna be coughing though, everyone. So just beware. I won't be annoyed. But I got it's 420, so I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. And I am the biggest stoner, but it doesn't matter how much I do it. <laughs> it looks like I've never done it every time I do it. On average, mm -hmm. I just in that way. Okay, this is not very stable. So I don't particularly like that. And I hate matches. I hate them. I always break them when I try and light them. On average, mm -hmm. it's the weirdest thing. Okay. Have a four twenty. <coughs> oh man, what <coughs> good weed we have right now. <coughs> it never feels. <coughs> now I got my green, color green on too. Wonderful.
Or is this just laughing at me? That's why I'm laughing. I can't stop laughing. I can't stop filming. <laughs> so everyone got me like this stuff from my Amazon wish list throughout the years, and then I put it all together. I was like, yes! I forgot it was 420, to be honest, for a minute, and I had on a dress. And then I was like, oh shit, it's 420! <laughs> can you grab me that Italian water too? I need it. Yes, I can. Sorry, guys, for the coffee. <laughs> so, that's healing me from all that years of damage. That's why I'm coughing. That's the chair. I'm not farting. <laughs> um, you guys have that. So, let me move this chair over here. So I forgot, well I remember this 420 this morning, but then I forgot before I was going to go on here. So I was in like a dress, and then <coughs> I'm like, oh, it's 420. I got all kinds of stuff for 420. Here, They're wonderful. So I geared myself up here. Pause the button. Pause the Here you go, Mom. Take this. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Another, another green sparkling Today is, beverage. Uh, Friday, April 20th, 2020. See planners on Facebook now. Today is also Hitler's birthday. Happy birthday, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I got a story for you guys about that, about Hitler in Las Vegas. Okay, here. Can you take this back? Yeah. You can have that back. Thank you, baby. Yeah, Hitler um, has some deep roots. Oh, yeah, Hitler has some deep roots here. So, Hitler's birthday is 420. I don't know if y'all know this. And um, so, the guy that owned the Imperial Palace, the Imperial Palace was is now the link. For all those of you who don't know Old Vegas, um, he's the guy that has that big car collection that I don't know if it's still exhibited at the link, but it used to be at Imperial Bus. I think it might even still be at the link. But <clears throat> he loved Hitler. And he just loved Hitler. He was a big Nazi, I guess. And he would have uh, parties for Hitler in the basement um, on 420 for years and years and years at the Imperial Palace in Las Vegas until um, the government here found out the, you know, the, they finally shut him down. And they fined him a huge fine for having Nazi celebrations. But he did that for years. He loved Hitler. Uh, and Hitler's birthday is 420, so, you know, it coincides with the stoners. The stoner Nazis like it, I guess. <laughs> um, so that's some little Las Vegas history. Yeah, I guess he did that for many, many years. And it's funny because when we lived in the cave, for any of you that remember in the cave, Robert, you guys remember Dr. Robert? His big trip was that um, the guy from the Imperial Palace owed him all this money. Supposedly that was his story. And I don't know how much of what Robert said was true or not, but uh, he did have a history, you know, at some point, in, and he was a doctor. He had a PhD, that's what we called him, Dr. Robert, you know, and now he had become alcoholic and was homeless. But um, he had shown me, you know, some of his documents of he was a doctor, you know, and he showed me, like, his old ID, like the paperwork. He didn't even have a real ID anymore. It all expired, but he had some of his old paperwork. So, um, but he had, was on this trip that that guy at the Bureau Palace owed him a ton of money. Remember that, Jarich? Mm -hmm. Do any of you guys remember Dr. Robert? He was building oh, yeah. that, <laughs> building the cabin up there, the two-story building. Oh, man, what a night. Man, some of you guys have had some real adventures. With I wish some of you could have experienced the cave stuff, some of you that are new. They uh, they took down our account on Periscope that had all that stuff, unfortunately. We can get back, maybe. But yeah, here's the right, thing. Yeah. It got deleted anyways because they only show, like, I think it's like 100 or 200. I can't remember videos. Well, we did so many that they were getting deleted anyways. Remember that? Yeah. As you made a new video, your old ones got deleted. So somewhere in their archives, they might have it. But So even if our account had not come down, all that footage was gone anyways because we kept making more videos because we can't stop making videos as you guys will see about us if you're new we make video like we film ourselves all day long i used to get annoyed when i first met jerry rich because it was just like sometimes i'd be like can you just enjoy the moment and stop filming the moment you know what i mean because you'd be like it just camera always out and that's the way it's been and i would get annoyed because i just wanted to like just sit there without a camera but then 
years later, uh, it was so nice to have all that footage, you know? And you're like, oh, I'm so glad because I was so pissed off in that moment. I'm glad the photo looks nice because I remember thinking, uh, you know? And then as I started to appreciate the memories, then now I actually do it. Now I do it probably more. He does. Now he gets annoyed with me when I try and film you. So, so 420 is Hitler's birthday. Yeah. And Imperial Palace guy would have parties there or something? What was it? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. So the guy that owns the Imperial Palace, who, uh, you know, now the Imperial Palace is the link. And for all of you that, you know, oh, my old Vegas and New Vegas, which, yeah, it's a Caesars property. Because C- basically the strip is owned by either Caesars or MGM. And then there's a couple of um, uh, uh, random ones like Venetian and Wynn and stuff. But the majority of them are either, used to be Total Rewards and M Life. Now it's called Caesar Rewards and still M Life. Um, and M Life is MGM properties. And then, of course, the Caesars. Yeah. So, um, the link is now a Caesars property, but it used to be Imperial Palace. For all you old Vegas people remember Imperial Palace, me and Jedi Rich stayed there when it was right, as it was about to be transitioning. What a dive it was. Oh my gosh, we got it for like $20 a night. But man, it was barely worth $20 a night at that point because they were remodeling. It was a nightmare. But anyways. Um, they had the, the car show there. Yeah, we went to that. We went to that show. Yeah, that's why we went and checked out his car collection. He had an amazing car collection. The guy that has a car collection is a Nazi. And he would hold Nazi celebrations all the time, but especially on 420, which is Hitler's birthday, in the basement of the Imperial Palace every year. And that was a big deal. So anyone that was a Nazi would know about it, you know, because they have their little kind of secret society. But no one else knew about it for a really long time until the local authorities finally found out or until it became public. I don't know. You know, sometimes maybe people knew and, you know, no one, you know, kept a secret until... I don't know how it finally got exposed, but once it finally got exposed, he was fined a lot of money, and it was told he couldn't do it anymore. What's again. weird is that even to this day, the link is, is is kind of cursed or hexed because it floods. Oh, it's yeah, it's a nightmare, and the and the place is the most. If anyone has ever stayed there or ever been there, it is a maze. You can, the place if you if you've never been there, you'll get lost for sure. I mean, we stayed there and we got lost. Um, now I know because I've been there enough times, but I mean, I still am sometimes like, where's that again? Because it's so it makes no sense, and the uh, parking is a nightmare. The parking lot for one thing is these tiny spots. And people's cars get hit all the time in there because it's just, it's, and they want you to get in these tiny spots that are really awkward. Like you have to come at them at like the weirdest angles. And then um, it floods like a river, like a rushing river goes through there. We have footage on our YouTube. Check out our Jai Rich Creative Producer on YouTube. Please subscribe too. We're trying to get more subscribers over there. Um, Rushing river going through there, and they're they're trying to work on it. We actually uh, got some footage this last year. Um, they they were doing construction now. Everything's shut down. I don't know what they're working on, but they were trying to redo all of that area because it floods so bad to where cars can't come through. I mean, it's it's like a river, um, and every every time because that's like where the it's like the funnel from the strip, like go like all the water. So as soon as it Rains. For one thing, the strip is already like where all the water kind of funnels to, um, because it's kind of in the valley from everything else in Vegas or anything. So, and then the link is literally like the bottom is literally like the drain or something, but there's no drain. (laughs) But it would be like (laughs) so. It's so bad. Um, and so we're saying that place is just like so cursed and. Also, what's interesting is they didn't tear that one down. They just remodeled it, so it's still that same original crappy building from the Nazi times. <laughs> um, yeah, but that guy has the car collection, if you guys have ever seen the car collection. But yeah, that's just some interesting Vegas facts. Another thing interesting, so there's this guy on YouTube. Um, <coughs> excuse me. His name's Steven. Uh, I believe his thing is called Not Leaving Las Vegas. Uh, he, he's, he's got quite a few followers over there on YouTube. He does these great videos about Vegas. And we have experienced a lot where you cannot film in Vegas. They're extremely strict, extremely rude about it. Security here is just... 
But, you know, a lot of people have not experienced that. So I guess he went out to film. He set up a chair and a tripod um, in front of the Bellagio fountains. Since, of course, there's nothing going on. No one's out there. No one's doing anything. Well, of course, he got in trouble. They, you know, gave him shit. I don't know exactly what happened, but he was very upset about it. I didn't watch his whole thing. So I was just something, but... That's happened to us. They're so rude about it, too, when they come. I mean, they just, and they tell you what they're doing is illegal. Oh, you can't use this. And you'll get sued. And, and you're like, get out of here. Oh, my goodness. For one thing, um, I don't know why these companies don't want uh, you to talk about their buildings in the sense of, even if it was negative, you know how they say no negative publicity is bad publicity? So, But usually when it comes to Vegas, people are ju- generally saying something positive, like, hey, I'm here in the front of the Bellagio. Even Steven, he's usually saying pretty positive things. I mean, right now there's some things that, of course, people are focusing on that are negative with this virus, but he's a positive guy. Um, and his blog is about positive things in Vegas for the most part. And so uh, it's weird that these companies don't want the publicity when people want to say hey look how cool this is and said they want to say well, we're going to sue you for because you're using the Blasio behind your video and you're not allowed to do that and you're like jeez louise and he actually makes money so they could actually sue him um if you're making money like on youtube and you use the strip footage they could actually the sue you. it's so ridiculous they've copyrighted all of the strip you're not allowed to. We found that out in the beginning because Jedi Rich was, uh, with his photography, he was adding, he had, uh, was doing stuff to Shutter, Shutterstock in a couple of those months, and they would not accept anything with the Las Vegas Strip. We we're like, whoa. And then uh, we had um, a company um, who was, I think it was the Weather Channel, they bought some of our footage of the strip when it snowed. And then they found out they couldn't use it after they bought it from us. But they said, oh, we found out we couldn't use it, but you guys, you know, keep the money and the thanks anyways. But we couldn't, they couldn't use the footage because it's copyrighted. So even the Weather Channel didn't know this was uh, about two years ago. Whenever it was in the, what was it, 2019? Or, I was getting confused whenever we had that snow here. It snowed on the strip. It was actually so beautiful. Sherwood's got some amazing footage of it on the Luxor and stuff, and they were going to put it on the Weather Channel. They actually reached out to us. It was pretty cool. We were excited, and they paid us for it. And then they found out they couldn't use it. So Vegas has had a lot of stupid laws for a while now, like you can't feed the pigeons. It's illegal to feed the pigeons, but it is legal here to kill them. They say, oh, yeah, you can pest control the pigeons to any means, even by shooting them. Um, And you can uh, poison them and all kinds of things. Fully legal. You can call the people. Our old apartments were going to do that. And I freaked out because we were watching this baby grow, which was amazing to see. You don't usually see a baby pigeon. They're called squabs. Beautiful. We, it was the coolest thing because we were feeding them, so they let us experience it. Uh, pigeons can get very, very attached to you if you feed them, and so they let us see. We got to see from the time it was egg it hatched and this whole thing. We have it all on footage. We have like countless hours of footage, um, and then they got mad because they were nesting, so they were gonna come shoot them, and I freaked out because we would watch the the family and the baby, and I went to the front desk, and I was like, Ple-, and they finally said, okay, fine, we'll install spikes and stuff instead. So the, I'm like, these people are out of control. But, I mean, they just hate animals. Oh, they poop on things. Who gives a crap? You poop, too, and it goes somewhere. You just don't see it. And they do not carry diseases. That is a lie. You can read about it. Pigeons actually don't even have the capacity. Their their immune system can't carry the diseases that everyone says that they spread. Like So they don't have the capacity to carry the disease to spread it on other people. It's just a lie. People just say, these are just lies. People say lies, just like we're finding out about this virus. So we are finding out that, of course, it was not the deadly virus, like I've been saying all along. Uh, less people died from this virus than from the regular flu virus. What we had was a regular flu virus that was blown out of proportion. And it was blown out of proportion because the Democrats wanted to sabotage our government. And we know that for a fact because the Democratic governments are the governors, uh, uh, the uh, Democratic governors are the ones that are 
still keeping these really tight restrictions. And there's actually states where people are protesting and the president has said to liberate these states. And I wish he would add Nevada to them. I think the ones I've heard is Michigan, Minnesota, and Virginia right now are the ones I heard. Uh, and please add Nevada to that because this guy is, is a nutcase over here. Sisolak, Governor Sisolak is out of his mind. He also asked for advice about opening Sin City from 20 bishops. He's a devout Catholic. Makes no sense to me. So we found out some stuff about Governor Sisolak yesterday. So it turns out Governor Sisolak is also a wife beater. Yeah, this was in the paper. Javrich posted it to Twitter. So he is uh, he's divorced, too, which I thought was not allowed in the Catholic Church. But apparently they've made exceptions. I don't know. Um, or they, you know, ask, ask enough forgiveness and you're all right for that. Whatever used to be, you couldn't get divorced. That used to be the big thing. That's why marriage meant something in, for the, in the church because you couldn't get divorced. But now they stretch that because marriage, they know everyone gets divorced. So they make exceptions to their stupid rules. Anyways, um, his first wife said that she felt like a prisoner and that he hit her and all kinds of things that came out. And, um, and then he uh, has kept his daughters from their mom for, like, all these years, like 20 years or whatever. I think his daughter's, like, 20 in, in their 20s and 30s. And it was a big deal, um, like, that came out uh, a couple years back, you know, before he was governor. And uh, Jared Rich put it on Twitter. Go check it out. Jared Rich is... Uh, at Jedi Rich Calm on Twitter and also at the Naked Jedi on uh, Twitter. Check out both those. Follow over there. Um, he's always getting juicy dirt on people. So my point about that is that shows what kind of person we're talking about here. This, he is not a good man, like I already said. He's not a good man. And um, he is making decisions from advice from the bishops for Sin City. Do you think Catholics would ever want Sin City to be open? They hate Sin City. This is like anti-Catholic. This is like where you come for sex, drugs, partying, rock and roll, doing uh, things anti-marriage. They don't want Sin City. They want this to become the next Disneyland. And they're making it a real shitty Disneyland right now. I mean, this is crappier than Disneyland. And Disneyland ain't much. <laughs> And this is like they're like trying to compete with Orlando. This is not for children. This is Sin City. Children are supposed to go to Disneyland, not to Las Vegas. I get so irritated when I see strollers here. What are you doing? This is Sin City. Why are you bringing your babies? Gee, Louise, you couldn't get a, a someone. You couldn't get anyone in the family to watch the baby for the weekend when you and your husband. Or wife, you know, come here, your friends. You're bringing strollers to Sin City? I mean, kids aren't even supposed to be in the casinos, you know, under the age of 21. So just walking through. But so it's just, it's so weird that they're bringing. So this is turning in to like a real crappy Disneyland. Because at least Disneyland, you go there and you know what it is. Here, here you're expecting to see hot chicks and sex and all this stuff. And say you got strollers. And you're like, what? This is Vegas. So that is what Sisolak wants. I mean, he bring, brought the NFL, which is going to be cool, but the NFL is a Christian organization. It's very Christian-based. I mean, all of the guys are very, talk about their faith all the time. Thank you, God. You know, they pray. They talk, they give all the credit to God. I mean, and then um, it's very also patriotic, which is also very uh, religious-based. Like, our money says in God we trust. Um, you know, our, all the things that we recite, you know, all often have God references for our, you know, our country songs and anthems and things. So it's very, very, um, Christian or Catholic, whatever you want to, um, base, you know, and I'm looking forward to the Raiders coming. I think it's going to be really awesome. But um, they got to keep this Sin City, you know. And I, I like that the Raiders are coming because I feel like that's a team that's really wild and crazy. And I want that to continue. I don't want this to become Disneyland. This is, you know, see, because if this becomes Disneyland, there will be no place that's an adult playground. 
You know what I'm saying? And people need that still. We have enough Disneyland's. We have Orlando. We have Disney World. We have, you know, all of these different amusement parks. I know when I was a kid, I went to tons of amusement parks, you know. We got them all over the world. Well, I don't know about all over the world. We got them all over the U.S. Um, we can't have every place be for the kids. We have to have a place for the adults. And that's what Vegas is supposed to be. That's what Sin City is. So as much as we want a family friend everything, then we'll never have an adult place. And Vegas is supposed to be adult. That's why it's supposed to be 21 and up, even to be in the casinos. It's supposed to be where you go when you're old enough to drink and gamble and uh, hire girls and do whatever. But now Vegas has gotten so strict that they'll arrest you for hiring girls too, even though they got the escort agencies. They're just ridiculous here. But I'm hoping that with all, everything that happened, that Vegas will have to take a reset and maybe, like, change some of these ridiculous laws and it really um, lessen up on the amount of cops we have here. Because no one in, is enjoying themselves when there's a cop on every corner. And people always like it for safety, but if you want to party, like, and, you know, even if everything you're doing is legal, let's say you're just drinking, you're not doing any kind of drugs, but you're still, like... It kind of kills the mood when you're, Woo! and then a cop, you know what I mean? No one really wants to see that because everyone feels like they're doing something wrong when they see a cop. And that's how it's getting to be. Okay, when we went out on New Year's this year, there were more cops than people. Me and Jai Rich walked the strip on New Year's, um, and it was bad because Vegas has already not been doing that well after the whole Mandalay Bay shooting incident that occurred in 2017, remember that, y'all? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Still coughing on that bong. It, it hits you later sometimes. Um, yeah, so Vegas was not doing as well. And they were starting to recover. This was, like, the best year since then. And then this happened. And what's unfortunate is people go, oh, what was this virus? So what are you going to do? But it was not. It was a flu virus. It was a regular flu virus that we get every year that now we stopped everything for. That's why I'm mad. Because it was not a deadly thing. It was a regular flu virus. We're seeing that. They're seeing the numbers come in. No one's even talking about the numbers anymore. Say what? Give me those mansions over there, please. Oh. Thank you so much. May I leave this too? This is the... Okay. Yeah. They're Jarrett. Um... And it was unnecessary. So it's just very irritating. And people keep, oh, I get so mad because people keep saying, oh, but we saved lives. So I was um, talking to this Uber driver yesterday. I, I Like I was saying, it, sometimes, you know, you pay $7. I'm trying to, we're trying to save every dollar here because it's, it's tight here, you know. So it's like $7 to Uber. I, I bust there, which was free. But then I had so much crap, so it was like $7 back. But it's a good investment because every time I get some good information from the Ubers because they're just, they're always talking to everyone and hearing things all around town and stuff. And, um, and I'm getting their perspective and stuff. And so this guy, we're talking and we're having a good conversation. And then uh, he's telling me that they're, they're finding out that um, in the different countries, they find out it didn't matter whether they quarantine or not. Like in some countries that they did really extreme levels of the quarantine had like, tons of cases, and then in countries where they didn't really do, like, any quarantine, no, like, maybe had, like, no cases or, like, very little cases, like, they're seeing, like, it didn't matter, and they're seeing, like, like, whether they quarantined or not did not play any factor on whether people had the virus or not in those places, which is what I was already saying. It, it was not this highly contagious thing. It was the regular flu virus that comes through, and it affects the people that would always be affected by the flu virus. It did not matter that, that if we quarantine ourselves. So we have not helped with this quarantine, but people are going to believe that they did. They're going to believe that the numbers are because we quarantined. For one thing, we did not quarantine. If we had actually quarantined, it would have been where we could not have... No one would have been able to leave your house, and the government would have delivered us supplies in, like, gear. They would have been all, like, you know, in the, like you see in the movies. That would have been a quarantine to actually make sure the virus didn't spread. But instead, they say, 
Some people don't work. Other people work. Have the delivery br- people bring everything to the same people. We all go to the store at the, the same time. I mean, that's not quarantine something. And that also just showed that it was not that um, contagious. Because as you saw, most delivery drivers, you'd see the same people, at least as I saw, same people day in, day out that were interacting with everyone. Never saw any of them get sick. You know, like every store I went to, I'm seeing the same people because I kind of know my people. Like I'm, I'm one of those people that goes same store, so I know. And I have not seen like one person missing of like the normal people I've seen. Same with at our front desk here. They still are getting all the packages. Not, um, not all the packages. I should say they're getting some of the packages that uh, come in the mail. The ones that come like from Amazon, they're making them deliver to our doors now. But if it comes in the mail, they still get the packages and then they, you know, are collecting payments and stuff. So they're interacting with everyone and none of them have gotten sick. So I I could just tell right away and we talked to tons of people that had recovered, but it was like I knew it was just not this contagious thing everyone was talking about right from the start. And then once Governor Sisolak did not shut down construction, I knew that they knew it was not deadly. So then, there you go, and everyone said I was crazy. But by not shutting down construction, should have told everyone in your mind, the government knows this is not deadly. Because otherwise, if they knew it was deadly, then they literally did not care about any of the construction workers' lives at all. Because they were saying construction was more important than your life if they knew it was deadly. That's the bottom line. There's no other way that you can make that work to say, oh, no, they cared about the workers. Oh, really? Then why couldn't they stop construction for a month or two? What was so crucial? What was so essential? The same as hospitals or, like, supplies. What was that essential with construction? To, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know the answer to that. But Governor Sislik apparently says that it was. So, no, he knew the virus wasn't deadly. What they're doing is they're trying to get Trump out of office. And, you guys, you have to wake up if you don't believe this. And it doesn't matter whether you like Trump or not. And I personally can't stand all of them. (laughs) I don't vote. I have never voted. I will not vote unless they completely change the system. (laughs) The only way I would vote. But but the current way the system is, I will not vote. I, I think our system is so jacked up, so much fraud. And even that whole electoral college bullshit, I don't like it. Um, and they've corrupted the whole system anyways, and everyone's cheating, and it's, it's a mess. So I refuse to partake in that, and I also don't like the candidates. The, those are our options. No, thank you. <laughs> Can I select someone else myself, write in someone? Forget those candidates. So, um, so I personally have a lot of things I cannot stand about Trump, but in this particular instance... He was right from the beginning when he said this was a farce from China in the sense of the exaggeration. Everyone would say, well, there there is a virus. Yes, there's always been a virus. It was a regular flu virus. That's the point. The point is the hoax of how serious it was. And Trump was saying that from the beginning. This is a hoax from China because we already knew China was mad at us. Remember, Trump just did that 25% tax on all stuff coming in from China. Right, and here's... Here's an example like what the press is doing now that the numbers aren't adding up to what they said it was. You know, the fifth in the numbers, but it's not the numbers they said. So here's like a headline right here. This is what it says. In USA Today, it says... What COVID does to your body? No, that it's one right or, here. Or one up there. Quote, we hear you, Dad. A daughter stays on the phone for hours and hours as her father dies alone from coronavirus. Now, let me share something with you. That sounds very scary. How sad. You picture like this 50 year old dad and this kid talking to her dad. Like, the woman's like 50, 60 years old talking to her like 76 year old father. See, they're dramatizing and everything. The guy was like, yeah, I mean, it's like, I hate a that. 50 no, year old woman talking to hours for her dad. I mean, how old? I mean, these people are just. See, what? here's the thing the media can do. Okay. I don't understand There's, this. This is people, everyone wants to say fake news mean? and then they want to. They either want to say fake news or they want to believe everything. You know what I mean? You got the two extremes. You got some people that say everything's fake news. And then you got some people that believe everything on the news. And then you have everyone in between, right? Well, there is also the thing of 
technically telling the truth, but just making it seem different than it is. So it's not technically fake news, right? Technically, they're not lying, right? But they're really making you believe it's something different than it is. And that's what they're doing with the cover virus. So what he said, you know, they said, daughter talking to her father as he dies alone is the headline from the COVID virus, you know? When you go to read, it's an old man that probably was already very ill and caught the virus just like with any flu virus and he would have died. And that would have happened and we would have never known about it because they're only exaggerating all of the things that happen all of the time. People every year die from the flu virus. Like 650,000 die worldwide. And these stories happen where a woman is talking to her father on the phone as he dies alone from a flu virus or from the common cold. If people are ill enough. Anything can kill you when you're ill enough. Like, if you're already, like, where they're, you know, on the kind of their deathbed, in a sense, you know, they're, they're like, already, then anything that can come in. That's why they tend to try to keep people away when people are very ill, because people bring in bacterias and and colds and viruses and all kinds of things, you know? Um, So those people are very, very fragile, and those are the people that are dying. But this year, we are hearing every story. Oh! And I feel bad for that woman. Be, uh, don't get me wrong. It is sad when someone dies. I lost a mother and a brother. But the thing is, <laughs> no one wrote that all over the news when that happened. You know what I mean? Because, my, But if my mom had died during this COVID virus, I guess I would have been famous. And I'm not saying it's not terrible that their loved one died. I'm saying you see how the media is exaggerating this and they're focusing on the deaths instead of focusing on the huge majority that have recovered people are recovering like crazy from this and they're only talking about the tiny portion that are dying that are already sick only people that are dying are people that were already sick like that like the very sick elderly or just the very sick even if they're younger but if they're very sick already like if they had a Poor immune deficiency or an immune deficiency. Uh, Poor immune and immune deficiency. I think a poor immune deficiency, that would almost be like a double double negative there, huh? (laughs) Anyways, um, so they're dramatizing it. So you got to watch it. So people want to call things fake news or believe it all when really just read the fine print is a lot of what you need to do. Because a lot of times it's just the large print that's misleading. And then you'll read and then, oh, there's the rest of the story. (laughs) People never read that. And that's why they do that. They know people just read the headlines. You know, um, that that movie um, Citizen Kane is all about that. That the guy figured out all you got to do is buy the newspaper and then you can basically control the world because if you control the news look at what you can do look at what they just did by scaring people whatever you put in the headlines becomes what's important if you are the news outlet um so anyways we were talking also about war of the worlds you guys know about this that occurred in 1930 um when the people were listening to this radio broadcast about this attack from the Martians. So this man was reading this radio story. It was supposed to be a story. If you guys don't know the story, I'll I'll sum it up. And it was going on for a while. You know, people were listening on the radio. And uh, in the very beginning, he says, this is a story. But then throughout the rest of it, he doesn't. And he got into all these things. And people got so into this and brainwashed by it even though it was just a radio that they started to think it was real and they thought we were being attacked by Martians and they started going in hoarding food and supplies just like they're doing now and they were panicking and they like it was this crazy thing they had this crazy 
like panic of everyone that had listened to this broadcast thinking this is real, this is something that happened. You guys, you can read about this, the War of the Worlds. And all just because they just started to believe that what this guy was saying was true, even though in the beginning he had even said this was a story. But their brains had just let them believe it at some point. They forgot it was a story. So you can be even misled, even if you knew it was a story. They still forgot, and they panicked, and they did what we're doing now. And, uh, well, well, some people are, not me. I ain't doing that shit, that hoarding. They think I'm hoarding just because I'm trying to buy what we normally buy because we eat a lot of beef. And they think I'm hoarding. I'm like, get damn me. Anyways. Uh, so the people got brainwashed and to think this was really happening, and they, got, it, they panicked, and it was this big thing, and it was hard for them to convince the people that this was, wait, this didn't really happen, and they believed it for a long time. And the government learned how easy it was to brainwash people. That even, like, they didn't even mean to with that, <laughs> and people got brainwashed. So then they realized you can with the media. So if you don't think the government is aware of what they can do with the media, you're out of your mind. And there's so much propaganda that can occur. And right now we just did that with this virus. We took a regular flu virus and pff, made it seem like it was this worldwide epidemic. And as we're seeing, less people died from it than the regular flu virus. So it was not a worldwide epidemic. And you say, oh, because there's quarantine. No one did a very good quarantine. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I, I didn't hear any country that actually did, like, an ultimate quarantine. And the U.S. did a terrible version of quarantine. <laughs> Basically, okay, do whatever you want. Just some people go home, some people work, and everyone go to the store at the same time. Oh, wait, now let's maybe not have everyone go at the same time. So let's maybe, okay, maybe make six feet at the store. Okay, maybe let's see. I mean, all these things came later after it would have already spread everywhere if it was this oh, crazy epidemic. So no, they just, they just literally tricked us all. I never was tricked, though. You all can go back. I've been telling you all. So when you all really believe the truth now, you remember you thought I was crazy. Was not. I'm telling you, this is this is a political stunt. Okay, what happened is they just tried to impeach our president. If you remember, uh, the Democrats wanted, to, and like I said, I am not political. I do not vote. I do not like either of them. I think the Dems and the Republicans, all the candidates, are equally greedy, selfish pricks that only care about them themselves, their family, and whoever they've made deals with. The rest of us, they could give two farts about. They don't care. And if you think they do, you're out of your mind. They do not care. Trump doesn't even pay workers that do stuff for him. Like, projects that he had all of these workers do, do all of the work for, he will not pay them. So he does not care about the little people. I don't know why we chose a president that didn't pay workers. That I didn't understand. I, I was like, okay. And they thought, oh, he's going to make us rich. I'm like, really? He's going to make you rich when he doesn't even pay the people that build for him why would he care about you and your family he cares about his family and his friends and his buddy Putin over there and his other buddy now Kim Jong-un I think they're little buddies now too um all the little dictators so I'm not for Trump either but I'm not for what the Democrats just did so now I think I'm more mad at the Democrats than even Trump which I didn't think was going to be possible but now they out-trumped Trump on this one, on uh, sabotaging our entire economy, and especially Las Vegas. And that I'm very sad about because I love this place. And I loved, and I say loved with a D because some of the casinos will not return. So I loved the casinos, and some are not coming back. Um, some will be bought by other people, change hands, open eventually. Some will... Some won't open at all. Um, some will close. They're already talking about closing some of them. So I'm very pissed off about this, especially at Governor Sislek, who's a devout Catholic and is happy to see Sin City crumble. And I don't know why they also voted for a devout Catholic to be the governor of Sin City. Ugh. 
But I don't vote, so <laughs> y'all voted for these retards. <coughs> and no one was better as a candidate, so it's not like there was a better option, so I know it's not you guys' fault. I don't I don't know. I don't know what Although I don't I don't know if it would have gone to this level with Hillary. <laughs> I feel like it would have just kinda stayed more the same. We are going through like freaking roller coasters with Trump. Man, as much as everyone hated Hillary, probably would have been a lot more steady, but I don't really care. You all f figure that crap out. I just do my thing, but I'm not happy with what happened to Las Vegas, and especially because it was all Governor Sislek's choice. He put these really strong um, rules and stuff. Like, he did stronger than what the president said, and that makes me really mad, and um, it's sad. It's sad to see that for something that was unnecessary. And people still believe that it saved their lives. Oh, so, so I was back to the Uber driver. So talking to me, he's telling me these things, tell me about uh, how in other countries they found that it didn't make it, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, cool, someone that's on the same page, you know. And uh, uh, he, he told me about, I figured out why everyone was panic buying because these darn stimulus checks. I forgot about this. All these people got see we don't get that stuff. So everyone got these checks, and then so they went immediately to the stores and started panic buying again. I'm like, oh my gosh, why would you immediately take that money? You should, if anything, be like kind of saving it and just getting what you need, you know, for a day or two instead of panic buying and spending all the money again. Now you're gonna be broke again and have all and have like fucking. 500 rolls of toilet paper. Did you hear they had to not allow returns for some of these things because that's what people did. They tried, after they panicked, bought, and then they tried to go return their, you know, stacks of roll of paper, uh, rolls of toilet paper, and the stores couldn't accept it because they're just like, sorry, man, you can't be returning all this crap that since you panic shopped. So a lot of the stores are saying no returns because people are doing that. So then I thought they learned. No, they went and did the same thing again. So that's why I had trouble yesterday when I was at Walmart. So I was trying to describe, and I should have shown the pack. So this meat came in a three pack. It's three pounds stuck together, but they sell them as three pack. And the label's only on the one pound. The other two are just sitting there, but they uh, you look like you can pull them apart, but you got to come apart. Well, I was trying to tell you guys a story where the guy was trying to rip the things apart. And I'm like, sir, these are a three-pack. So, what are you doing? But um, they told me I could have two packages. And his manager had just come by and said I could have that. Because I had three. They took one. And he said, oh, you could have that, ma'am. And then he comes over and it's like taking it out of my car. I say, your manager just said I could have what is in my car here. What are you doing? And he's like, oh, no. And he starts rip, trying to rip my thing. I was like, what are you doing? Those are... He said, I could have two bags. Well, you have uh, three. I said, no, those are sold as one, and these are sold as one. So I ended up with six pounds, which is great because we were able to eat that yesterday. Otherwise, I would have had to go back to the store, and that's how much we eat. People go, oh, way too much beef. Well, that's what we eat. Sorry. And we've been doing that for years until this panic buying. There was not an issue until the people started panic buying. So who's changing, me or them? I'm doing the same thing. If anything, I'm eating less because we've been missing meals so everyone else is causing the problem. They're saying, me now. And I'm like, I'm doing exactly what I was doing. If anything, we've been missing meals, so we're eating less. I'm not the one panic buying, but they're like, oh, you're buying too much meat. Like, Screw you guys. That's what I do every time. <sighs> the manager knew that I'm the one that buys it because that store carries it just for me. I'm literally the only one. That, until this happened, I was the only one buying the organics there. And they knew it was me because sometimes I would order online, so they knew it was one person buying, like, a huge quantity. And they would reorder it, and I knew every day, I knew the day that they reordered it, I'd go buy it, and then uh, I'd wait for them to reorder it, and I'd buy it. So it was just me buying it. And they knew that. And so when the manager came over, he knew, because he even called me one time, because one time it got delivered, and they, they didn't find our address, and he called me personally. And he's like, I'm sorry that our delivery driver messed up. We're sending you again. But they had to throw out like five pounds. So I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. But it had been sitting out too long. But so they knew me. So he came over and oh, yeah, she can have that. And then Mr. Nazi Cashier Patrol, and it's the self-checkout, you know, so he comes over and is going to. And that's what's happening is we're having these people that normally don't have a lot of power. 
and they're in a position. And sometimes you're in a position because you're not someone that should have power. Because when you get the power, you become really nasty. And there, that's why some people in lower positions, the reason why they didn't get um, promotions was because they were not people that could handle being in charge. And that's what's happening is now when we're giving people, like, permission to, like, you know, be, like, six feet apart and, no, you can't have that in there. And when they shouldn't be people in charge, they treat you really nasty. And that's not good for these businesses to be allowing that. Because normally, like, when a manager comes over, you're treated very nicely. And that's what happened. The manager was extremely nice to me. And then his cashier, the one, the self-checkout cashier, comes over while the manager was there. So he heard what the manager said and then wanted to give more stricter rules than what the manager had just said. I was like, what are you doing? I literally said, what are you doing? Your manager just said I could have this. What are you doing, sir? I was trying to be nice. I said, what are you doing, sir? Your manager just said I could have this, and those are sold as that's one, and that's one. And I don't know, and I had to literally show, I said, stop ripping that for one thing. You're going to rip it. They don't rip. Like, you're going to rip the package, and we're going to have the meat open up. Because they're not, you have to cut them. And then I said, look, it says three on the label. She's like, oh, 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 ooh. I got accosted by the guy. I mean, he ripped it out of my hand. I was like, it's rude. Um, and it's not right. People are taking this so crazy. And it's over a flu virus. And, and it's just disgusting. And we're seeing the behavior of people, and it's just appalling. We're seeing the people that are just only care about themselves and their family. I'm sorry. It's good to care about your family, but to think I'm in a hoard and then not care about anyone else. The reason why they're having to put these rules is because people are hoarding. But what's happening is it's affecting people that don't hoard. They're just trying to get the regular stuff. That since I don't have a car, um, I try to get like two days' worth of stuff. I don't have a car. At least a day's worth. They're getting, they're trying to give away. I can't even get a day's worth of stuff. Now I'm having to go <laughs> at least once a day, if not twice a day, because I can't even get a day's worth when they do those limitations. And where other people are hoarding so much crap, and they don't notice because they buy so many different things. But see, I only buy a couple of things. I buy beef, I buy organic beef, organic greens, organic garlic, paper towels, wipes, we don't use soy paper, we use baby wipes, um, bird seed, and water. And uh, once in a while things like dish soap and, and sponges and things like that and cleaners. But that's it. That's all we get. So when I go, I'm going to try and get you know, a couple of waters if I can, so I don't have to go back a bunch of times, you know. And now it's like, no, you get one pack of water and one gallon. Well, I used to like to get my sparkling water and two gallons, so then that would hold. Now that's not allowed, because now you get your pack of water or your gallon. But it's like a two-package thing, so I figured out I could get a two-and-a-half gallon and a package of water. When that's available. So that's what I did yesterday. That's why I couldn't take the bus because I had my two and a half gallon package of water. Um, they let me have the two packages of the meat. So I ended up with six pounds. Nice. But, you know, and then I got my two things of bird seed. So they're allowing you like two of everything. Which that's great. But for us, most of that stuff, luckily I was able to get that was cool because I was going to get the two and a half gallons so that actually ended up being a pretty good thing so I'm set with I got my I'm actually now the only thing I ran out of is the meat we need more meat but hey I was ordered able to order on Amazon so there we go but I probably have to go today and get something probably get some fish or something I don't know it's getting wild out there people over buying anyways um I forgot what I was going to say, but I think it's because I think it's almost time for me. I'll, oh, yeah, but 420, so that's why I'm in this gear, as I all know, know. And it's unfortunate because usually 420 is really fun here in Vegas ever since they've had weed legal. It's like a huge deal here. It's like Christmas here for the dispensaries. 
We're missing all of these cool things. It's like, uh. And everyone is canceled on Vegas. It just sucks. So we can thank good old Steve Sislek, the, the wife beater. Yeah, that's the news if you guys missed that. Sislek got in trouble many years back from his first wife, so he's divorced, which I have no judgment there, but technically, originally from the Catholic Church, you weren't supposed to get divorced, and he's a devout Catholic. He goes and asks advice from the bishops of what he should do about Sin City. So, I don't know. I think that's interesting that he got divorced himself, and now he's asking advice from bishops. It's like, why are you someone that you are the governor of Nevada, which is where Las Vegas is, Sin City. You've been divorced yourself. Why do you... Why are you still, like, a devout Catholic? This is ridiculous. But I guess the Catholic Church, you know, has updated in the more recent years where you can now get divorced. But, you know, back in the day, you could not get divorced in the Catholic Church. That was a big deal. But they had to change that once everyone started getting divorced. They're like, okay, we can allow it now. Just ask for forgiveness. Anyways. um, So, that guy. I just can't believe we, that he got elected. I'm like... Jeez Louise. So he allowed the Raider Stadium, of course, to continue doing this whole thing, and, and it's looking great. So that is great that the Raider Stadium didn't get shut down, but that proved that he knew it wasn't deadly because he allowed all, all construction to continue during this process, even when they had several workers test positive. Now I think it's either three or four workers have test positive at the Raider Stadium in um at the other one, the resort world, they had, uh, they personally had to shut down their site because a bunch of workers were tested positive, so they were just like, okay, we're going to shut it down and clean it all, hazmat it. But the governor didn't even shut that down, so he allowed that to continue. So I knew all along he knew it wasn't deadly. And it was done, so they couldn't get Trump out of office with impeaching him. So they figured they would get him out of office by destroying the economy because the economy was doing very well. The stock market was at a, 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 at a high. And they thought, oh, geez, he's going to get reelected. Because remember, election year, this year. Um, and remember, it's very important who becomes the next president because one of those Supreme Court judges is probably going to die and probably, what's her name, Ginsburg, I always forget her name. Something like that. Um, she is very sick. And she's one of the people that if she got the virus, she'd probably die because she was already very sick. And if a Republican is in office when another Supreme Court judge dies, they are going to be very powerful because they are going to have the majority of the Supreme Court and of Congress. So that is extremely scary to the Democrats. So this is an extremely important election. And they did not want it to be Trump, for one thing, but they don't want it to be any Republican at all. They want it to be a Democrat so that a Democrat can appoint the next Supreme Court judge. So if a Supreme Court judge dies while it's a Republican, we are going to have Republicans running for a long time, like controlling the government because they're going to be... um, able to make so many laws pass if they are in control of the majority of Congress and the Supreme Court. Do you realize they could just have law after law pass? So this is huge. And uh, the Democrats would basically just lose all their power if that happens. So right now, they don't care. They will sabotage their own states as governors for the bigger cause of bringing down the Trump. And that's what they did. Um, but I don't think it's going to work. I think it's going to backfire because now people are realizing that's what they did. So that's going to put a really bad taste in people's mouth once they really, really realize what the Democrats just did. So unfortunately, they probably just gave Trump the election. And I, I don't even know if it's unfortunate because I honestly don't know which would be worse at this point. For right now, um, all those Democrat candidates look like buffoons to me. Um, but I do not like a lot of the things that Trump has done. And I don't like that we just uh, uh, declared war on Iran. I don't like that tax to China. I don't like the way he runs his business um, practice of screwing people over. He thinks that, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting a little hoarse. <coughs> I need some water. <coughs> he thinks that, uh, he wrote a book. I think it's called The Art of the Deal, I want to say. I could be wrong on the name. Um, but in that book, he thinks that making a good deal is the other person feeling that they got screwed over. That that makes it a good deal. 
if like if people feel mutually happy then that's not a good deal like you didn't like you didn't get enough because you didn't screw the person over enough they should feel gypped that's the way he runs his business in life and I don't agree with that and um, I've always been one of the little people um, and he you know basically shits on the little people he doesn't even pay workers so I don't agree with any of that and I was very confused why people made him president (laughs) being that those principles that he upholds Um, and so that's that. But right now with what I see with the Democrats did, I'm like, geez, they destroyed our economy in an attempt to take down Trump. And that's definitely not caring about the little people because see people with money will survive through this. But it's the little people. That's the small businesses. So I heard yesterday um, that now one of the big issues is small businesses are not able to pay their rents or leases or whatever they had because they're not getting any money from their business. So now the businesses are starting to get evicted. And now, even though that's supposed to be illegal, what are you, you going to do if your landlord takes all of your stuff and puts it outside and locks you out? And that happens. They do that. They're doing that to businesses, to private residences, to people. Um, or uh, I've heard where they took out all of the people's appliances if they didn't pay the rent. So they couldn't evict them. But they took out all their appliances, including their um, oven and their fridge and their washer and dryer and everything when they came home uh, the the owner of the house because they hadn't paid rent and even though they couldn't evict them they said sure you could stay in here and not pay your rent but you're not gonna have any appliances so things like that are occurring and all because of this exaggerated flu virus and people are losing their small businesses um people are losing people are starting to oh we had an incident here a man was trying to jump off a bridge here in las vegas people are starting to commit suicide they uh, had to shut down one of the highways for a minute. A man was threatening to jump. I don't know what happened, the end of it. Um, I don't know if he lived or died, actually. I didn't. Uh, Jarvis just told me a little bit of it. I didn't hear the rest of the story. But, yeah, they had shut down the highway. Um, but they are starting to see a spike in um, suicides because people are like, oh, my God. I mean, their, their livelihood is destroyed for some people, especially if you had a job that maybe now won't be recovering. Like a lot of these jobs in Vegas, like dealers and bartenders and even other things that are not entertainment related, but those especially when Vegas even opens, there's only going to be a couple of casinos opening. So, like, there's going to be so many people out of work even when the casinos come back. Uh, and that's how it's going to be in a lot of places. Same with a lot of factories. I'm sure they've had to cut back on workers. Oh, so I was talking to an Amazon delivery guy yesterday. And now here's the new thing that's starting to happen is we're literally running out of actual supplies because we've shut down the factories. So there's no new things coming in. So Amazon is running out of supplies to where they can't get more because they shut down so many factories. So people aren't making things like paper towels and wipes. That's why we've run out of them. So if they don't open the stuff soon, it's going to be even crazier because we are literally going to run out of supplies. So this is getting so out of hand when people aren't even dying from this. And this aftermath we're going to see is just going to be catastrophic. Like this avalanche, people have not even realized it because they're just sitting at home thinking, oh, it's going to be fine. When it all opens, we're just going to party. No. It's going to be a mess. And already is becoming a big mess. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to jump off here, I think. Uh, I need to cook breakfast. I was able... Oh, gosh. Guess how excited I got yesterday. The little things in life, I tell you what. I was able to order two pounds of the 93% from Whole Foods American Organic Beef, which is unheard of. They never have that. Like, in all... In the last... Three years I've been shopping at Whole Foods. They did not have the 93%. And they just had it yesterday, two packages. And I was like, thank you, Satan. We say thank you, Satan, around here. Um, But I I was like, that is too cool. Since Walmart 
would be in church and wouldn't let me order. So I got two more pounds. Oh yeah, little things in life. If you eat our diet, you would be so surprised how the, just some pure, wonderful, organic beef is the most satisfying thing. People want to eat all this crap and they never feel satisfied. Go for a second with, like, miss a meal on, on our diet, especially, and you, oh. I mean, it always tastes good, but when we miss a meal like we did when they, all the see, what happened is we normally shop odd hours, but when everything was 24 hours here, now they've made everything, like, crappy hours, like, opens, like, 8 or 10 a.m., and then closes, like, 6 p.m., a lot of the stores, 6 or 8 p.m., and so um, we missed the one store, because they didn't deliver us what we, they were out of it, and we didn't know, so then we missed the store. So then we had to go, we had eight at like 4 p.m., and then we had to go all the way till 7 a.m., and that's when, yesterday, so that's why I was mad, because there was nothing we could eat. We can't just go to the store when we're, what we eat, you can't just go to the gas station, and fast food or something, no, it's, we, we cook it all, and we eat all organics. So when the st grocery stores are closed, you're screwed. We're like, oh, God, we're getting so hungry. Our stomachs are growling. And then that's when I came in, and I was so irritated because then they were, the guy's grabbing it out of my hand after I'm like, I'm hungry. Don't be taking my beef right now, buddy. You don't even know. When after, Okay, here's the thing. People think I'm hoarding, but I that is all that I want, and that's all that we eat, and normally people don't touch that. Now, right now, people are going for it because they're just grabbing for anything, and they're going for that as a last resort, but I am specifically going to the store for that. So I get they might think I'm hoarding, but I'm like, you don't understand. People are doing that as a last resort. This is all I'm going here for. This is all I need. I'm not trying to hoard. These people are hoarding, and then they're going, oh, there's all the conventional's gone. Oh, all we have left is organics. Because literally the last thing, like, everything else will be gone. And I'll be like, oh, yes, the organics are still there. And as soon as I notice them, literally herds of people come over. I'm like, they've been sitting here, no one paid any attention. And now I look at them, and everyone goes, oh, what's that? Every time I go, this is what happens. And, and then they literally pick it up, and they see the price, and they put it back down because they're more expensive. So I'm like, they've been here, everyone saw the prize, no one wanted them, till I come over, and then everyone's like, what's that? Starts grabbing them out of my hands. I've literally have like had to fight older ladies before. They're like, what is that? And I'm like, jeez, it's organic. So I'm trying to grab the other ones, but I don't take it out of her hand, but she's grabbing for, as I'm grabbing. And I'm like, you were not even paying attention. And then she looks at them and she puts them back when she sees the prize. And I'm like, you only started grabbing that because I was over here. What is wrong with these people? You wanted nothing to do with this until you saw me wanting it. I didn't go over to what you were looking at just because you wanted it. I went to what exactly I knew I wanted, which I buy every time I'm there. And now you just as, because I was paying it attention, these hoarders are just nasty. And it's nasty. And it's, I'm sorry, but the older people are the worst that I've been seeing with just their energy. And then they glare at you. Okay, what they do is they block the whole aisle, all right? You know, we got this new six feet thing. But what they like to do is they put their cart and part of the aisle, like where it's sometimes, you know, this way, where it's like completely blocking, and then they stand in the other spot. So, like, you can't go down the aisle. You're like, uh, can you either move your fat ass or the cart, one of the two? And I say fat ass, people always say, don't call people fat. You know what? Right now, there are a lot of people that are being greedy, and I'm going to call them fat ass in a greed sense. You know what I mean? Because if you're hoarding and you're already overweight and now you're hoarding and you're blocking people, then I'm going to call you fat ass right now. I'm sorry. I think now is the time when you see that, you know that people are over consuming. And I know it's tough. I know most people are addicted to sugar is why they overeat and it's hard to stop. So it's not like you can do it overnight. But right now, if you are overeating, you got to think about what's going on. We are in a shortage of things. You are being greedy when other people don't have things. Now should be the time that people are losing weight because there's not enough. And that's what's happening with us. We're losing weight because it's like, oh, gee, I can't get the food we need. Um, and that should be reality, but then some people are in excess and they're gaining weight right now, probably at home getting fat. Well, so I'm going to call those people fat ass right now because right now we are in a time where we are supposed to be working together, where it's supposed to be like not hoarding, 
people are getting what they need. And that's why I'm mad because people think I'm hoarding just because I'm buying what I need. But if people weren't hoarding, no one would be buying what I'm buying. Does that make sense? The only reason why it's getting bought is because people are hoarding. And that's why I'm mad. Because I go to that store every day and I have now for like a year. And I went to other stores locally and the same thing. The organics didn't sell. They would even, I would even talk to the butchers. They knew I was the one that would buy it. They would be like, if I didn't go to a certain store for a minute, and they'd be like, oh no, where is she? And then I come in, oh, there she is. They literally say, oh, there she is. She's going to buy the organics. Because those are expensive when they get expired. And that was happening at the stores because no one was buying it except for me. And... Now with the hoarders, they're saying, oh, you're a hoarder. And they literally have a dusty tell me, you need to leave it for other people. Don't hoard, ma'am. It's like, excuse me. For one thing, I was the only one ever buying this. And this was expensive. And your store used to appreciate me. That's why your manager knew exactly who I was. But you, mister, step aside. No, they really do get to know me at the stores. Because I do. I, I'm pretty noticeable. I go in and I, I wear the same outfits pretty much. And I go, I beeline and I buy ton of beef, organic beef, greens, bird seed, garlic, and water. And so every cashier gets to know me. They're just like, most random order, you know, everywhere I go. Um, they all ask me, oh, what is this? I get asked all the time, is that that Beyond Beef? I say, absolutely not. This is full cow. <laughs> this is a real cow right here. And then they're like, oh. This so one Asian lady was so appalled. She asked me, oh, is that that, that fake meat? I said, absolutely not. This is the real meat. And she's like, oh, she thought I was vegan. I'm like, no, I'm not vegan. <laughs> I'm the opposite of vegan. I eat all meat. It's funny, people always think when I say organic, so that means vegan. That is not. Vegan means you don't eat animal products. Um, organic means food that has not been tainted by basically man in the sense of uh, food that was originally from the earth, like um, without antibiotics, steroids, hormones, colorings, flavorings, artificial things, sugars, all these things they add to things now. So organic um, GMOs. Genetically modifying. GMO means genetically modifying, if you know, genetically modified organisms, if you guys don't know what that means. So they started messing genetically with these plants. Well, they thought that would be all right, but now we're finding that that's what's causing a lot of illnesses, sicknesses, all of the messing with the food, changing the genetics of the food did not work out as well. That's why we have more people uh, obese than ever. They thought it would work. And it didn't kill people right away, so they thought, oh, cool, it works. You know what I mean? Like, and for many years, it's been... But now we're seeing um, people are getting larger and larger, and it has a lot to do with the genetically modifying of the, an of the animals and the, uh, and the, the foods, the, the, the fruits, the veggies, the everything, all the packaged stuff. They're, they're, packaged stuff is just fake food. I mean, that's just stuff they made in a lab, basically. Um, but they're finding, you know, with the that people are getting larger, and it has a lot to do, with, I think, with the steroids and hormones, too. So if you're, if they're giving that to an animal or a plant, let's say even like an apple, you know how the apples are bigger than they used to be? Well, that's because they gave it a hormone or, or a steroid or whatever they give to the apple. I don't know what they give to each thing. Um, and to make it larger. And then they also give coloring to give it a certain color. You don't want that because then now you're ingesting all of that crap. If they gave it to the plant or the animal, you're now going to ingest it. So whether it be a hormone, steroid, antibiotic, coloring, whatever thing, whatever, uh, pesticide, all these things, um, you're now going to consume it. So when you think organics, you want to think free of all of that crap and food that was the way food used to be before they started messing with it. That's what organics are. It has nothing to do with eating animals or not. Actually, organics, um, I say, eat a lot of animal. And that's why vegans hate me. I get a lot of hate online from vegans. Um, and especially for the, uh, from a particular celebrity vegan can't stand me. Um, and she says, how could you ever recommend people to eat meat when they're torturing animals? And I say, well, for one thing, I recommend people to do organics, which is not torture to animals. 
organics, they treat the animals fairly, and that's what I encourage people to eat because then they do fair treatment of animals. They have no cages, pasture-raised, grass-fed, um, no antibiotics, steroids, no hormones, no pesticides. All of these things are good for the animals as well, and you can see all these things on the packaging as you look for organics, um, GMO-free, all these things. That's the animal treatment as well. So the animals are not getting the bad treatment that they do with some of the other stuff. Now, if you can't afford the organics, I do say do what you can until you can maybe start budgeting in the organics. What I would do is maybe do it slowly. What you'll find is at first you'll think organics are a ripoff because it's smaller. You think what's more expensive and it's smaller. Yes, <clears throat> yes, because that's the way food is supposed to be. And as your body adjusts and acclimates to it, you'll find that that smaller piece is way more satisfying than that larger thing of whatever the conventional was, be it an apple, be it a piece of steak. As you'll see, organics are small, and people go, oh, it's more expensive, and it's smaller. Yeah, because it's healthier. So that's why it's more expensive, and it's better treatment for the animals. So that would be my argument for one thing with the uh, vegans, is go for organic options, then you don't have your argument of... Uh, that treat, and about the animals being treated unfairly. But then they'll say, oh, well, don't, I don't want to eat death. Well, you always eat death because plants are alive as well. And so is anything they create in a lab. It becomes a living organism. So you're always eating death. And caveat to that, eating death is not a bad thing. That's how you gain knowledge. So you want to get the knowledge from the plants and animals. And they, they don't necessarily want to be hanging out in this current state forever. Let them go to the next dimension, which is probably better than their current dimension because if they're an animal, most animals don't have the best existence right now because humans kind of dominate. And even if it's something like, you know, your pet, as great as you think their life is, I don't know how great they think their life is if they're like on leashes and cages and stuff. You know what I mean? We think, oh, they're having a great time. But the next, next dimension might be a lot better for them. Um, and especially something like a cow that they just graze. So as long as they're treated fairly, like no cruel treatment to the cow, then I feel very comfortable eating that cow and letting him go to the next thing that'd probably be more fun than just grazing for grass for its entire existence. So I don't know why vegans think they're saving the animals by letting them continue because Honestly, the animals are like, yeah, that's what we're here for. And then we're going to go to the next, next ex existence. I'm really tongue twisted this morning for some reason. <laughs> I think I need more water. I just feel like parched. Um, but yeah, so it's this whole don't eat death thing is their other argument. And then I've heard this the third argument was water, that it uses more water for animals than for plants, which that one I honestly am so baffled by because, for one thing, plants need so much water, and especially almonds need so much water, and almonds are a very common thing that a vegan or vegetarian would eat, and almond milk is what's using so much water that that's why we're having droughts in California. The, while they're trying to make almond milk, they're just using so much water for the production because you need so many almonds to make almond milk. Um, and so it, they're, that's where, like, they're using, like, just, I don't know the number, but insane amounts of water. And um, so the more you eat a vegan or vegetarian diet, you have to eat more almonds and more plants than you would have to for animals. So the argument is that, well, you're feeding, having to feed the animals, the plants, and then you have to feed in water the animals, and then you eat them. So that costs more. But you realize you have to eat way more plants to ever equal the amount of protein you get from animals. So like you yourself would be consuming so many plants and so many almonds and so I mean like that's that's what we're doing that you're actually using if not comparable more water over here you can't say more water over here like the, I I can't believe there's more water over here I mean I don't know the numbers but with the amount of almond milk that people are using so almond milk uses way more almonds than if you were to eat almonds same with almond butter all these almond things and you need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of water to make those things. So um, 
the water argument, I'm like, really? <laughs> so that one, I don't understand. And I was a vegan for 12 years, okay? You guys, so I understand being brainwashed to think you're saving the animals in that it's a great diet and stuff. And it, it, it feels good because you feel like, oh, I'm not eating animals and I'm doing this good thing. And the options on a vegan diet are delicious. People act like they're sacrificing. What? Sacrificing what? It's like a almost all sugar diet. It's delicious. I remember the smoothie diet. And I was like, man, it's like ice cream. Woo! I can live it on ice cream. This is fantastic. And then I got fatter and fatter, and I would not accept that. I thought my scale was wrong. I thought my scale was wrong. I thought it was giving my body fat percentage wrong. I thought, oh, it just must be wrong. Because I wasn't even seeing, like, the number go up. This is when we used to wear ourselves. This is back in, like, 2016. We don't have a scale anymore. We don't do that. Um, but this is, like, 2016, and uh, we were weighing ourselves, and it did the body fat percentage, and then you're weight but the weight didn't go up as much because I was losing muscle and I was gaining fat so and muscle weighs more than fat so sometimes your weight you might not see but I started to see my fat percentage just go up and up like each each uh you know couple of uh, maybe like each week jump up another notch I'm like hmm I'm on an upward trend with this fat percentage and I just couldn't figure it out. I thought for sure what I was eating was healthy and it was, I was doing all smoothies and we were doing like, I mean, like these avocado, banana, uh, almonds, you know, protein stuff, all kinds of different things, berries, you know, uh, we were doing all, all kinds of different things, doing all berry smoothies and then we do the, you know, ones, the avocados or, um, and then uh, we got into tahini and maca powder, and all kinds of different things, and all these protein powders. And, oh, it was delicious. And, and then I was like, Pff. and then uh, uh, this is all kind of during my time, too. I was trying to stop bulimia. So I was struggling with the bloating, but I was doing the smoothie diet, but I would bloat. But anyway, so um, people will have a tendency to not even see themselves gaining weight when they're doing a diet that they want because they want that one to work. And the biggest thing that people want is coffee. They want coffee to be okay. They do not want to hear that coffee is bad for you. They don't want to let that one go. And caffeine, all caffeine, not just coffee. <laughs> not just coffee. Caffeine. Um, and that's the one people just, they just, as soon as you say that, Brain turns off or something. Oh, no, no, no. I can't let my caffeine go. I'll listen to everything else. I'll do everything else. I'll do the caffeine. And that's probably the one that's causing you the most havoc and grief, unfortunately. Because it's the one you're probably doing the most of. People are just such caffeineaholics right now. And they think that it's helping them. They think that it's making them lose weight or not eat. And um, (laughs) it's actually making you gain weight. So... And I'll tell you that real quick, and then I'll probably get off here. So the reason why it makes you gain weight, if you're like, what? Caffeine makes me gain weight? Yes, 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 yes. Lots and lots of weight, especially year after year after year. That's where those added pounds are coming from, is from your caffeine. The reason is, caffeine is a suppressant, a depressant. When you drink caffeine or consume it in any way, in anything, your energy, things, those little pills that people take, whatever, any kind of caffeine, um numbs your senses it dulls your senses that's what it does it kind of like chills you out and so it makes you feel not as hungry and it makes you feel not as tired so you actually get energy because your senses and your hormones are dulled down so you feel oh oh i'm not tired oh i'm not hungry because like those sensors that would tell you you're hungry you're tired are like not as active now um and so you think oh that's great but the problem is the one, the one hormone that you dole down that you don't want to dole down is your hormone sensor. So what happens is then you tell your hormone sensor to stop producing so much, okay? And it produ- your hormones need to be pro- producing um, insulin all the time to keep your body regulating your sugar flow, you know, um, your blood sugar. Well, when you tell it not to work, well, then your blood sugar rises because the insulin stops producing so much. So your blood sugar rises, and that's part of what people like about you get that spike, that rush, because your blood sugar rises. And But then your body goes, uh-oh, my blood sugar is rising. So it starts producing more insulin. 
But then after the caffeine wears off, those hormones that were producing insulin start producing insulin more or, you know, up in their production or, you know, coming back full stream. So now you have a bunch of insulin. And the problem with insulin is insulin tells your body to store fat. And um, also to relax and to, like, go into hibernation, be like a bear, just don't do anything. So that's why you hit later after your caffeine why you get so tired and why you need more caffeine and more and more and more. And that's why year after year after year people are doing more and more caffeine and they're getting fatter and fatter. And probably the caffeine is the thing that they're not realizing because they're probably watching everything else, like I'm eating this or that, and then they're just drinking so much coffee or energy drinks or whatever it may be. Red Bulls, rock stars, all those things, you know. Um, the caffeine. Cut back. Cut it out if you can, but cut back while you're not working and cut it out as soon as you can. But it, it's it's a strong drug. You'll find out when you start cutting back. You get headaches and stuff. Just work through the headaches. People don't want to work through pain. I don't know why. They don't want to work through pain. They, once they have pain, they want it to go away. They want it to just be gone. But one part of healing is feeling the pain and then knowing that it's getting better. Now, I feel pain a lot. I am in a lot of pain. I don't know if you guys know that. I have a lot of um, pain from years of abusing my body in the sense of, like, with um, bulimia and alcoholism and different things. I really messed up a lot of stuff, and I have a lot of injuries, like a broken foot that I jumped out a window when I was drunk um, that I didn't heal. And um, and then I sprained... I don't know, Sprained a... a ankle just recently and didn't let that heal right and then a couple of other injuries and stuff and so as you heal you feel all these old injuries they hurt but you feel them getting better and so you don't want to just take something and not feel the pain like weed helps with the pain so you don't feel as much but you still feel the pain but people want to take pills and things says I don't want to feel pain but feel the pain but know that you're working through it now the problem is if it's just pain and you have no answers, that's where it's scary. But see, if you eat healthy and if you do weed, I highly recommend weed, especially if you're going to say that it's legal, go check it out if you haven't yet. Especially that the legal weed is some really, really cool weed. And today is 420. If you can't tell, I am <laughs> into weed today. Need I say more? So I have an Amazon wish list for my Chelsea Vegas, for those of you that don't know. I'm also Chelsea Vegas. Chelsea Avery Wood also. Lots of names. Um, that's my work profile. And um, people get me Amazon wishlist stuff. And then I take photos in it and I send them like the sexier version and then I post them. But all this stuff came from there. All this weed stuff. So these, uh, these undies, the socks, this. Actually, uh, actually everything I am wearing came off of my wishlist. <laughs> Except for the hat. The hat, actually, I got from going, being on um, MFC, my free cams. I only did that for a short time, but I got all this cool gear. Anyway, so I did all green today, a green screen. But um, I highly recommend weed. If you, if you had tried it in your past, like when you tried the shitty weed you got from, a, you know, the black market stuff, don't let that be your only experience because the, the legal stuff is amazing. It's like... You can just pick and choose. Like there's so many things, and then you're like, I don't, I don't want that. Oh, you're so picky now. Oh, um, what, what else you got? Oh, uh, well, how, what, what is the THC? What terpenes? Mm, mm, um, yeah, I mean, we're so choosy now. When I first went in 2016, I had no idea what anything was, and I was, and now I'm like, oh. so. It, but it's cool because you, you really learn what you like. Um, I would recommend the best thing to do, if you smoke it, just go get yourself a couple grams of different ones to try them out. Don't get yourself an eighth because that's like, you know, around $50. Get some grams, try them out, see which ones you like. And then, or pre-rolls. Or um, the, only thing, the only thing I don't like about edibles is they have a lot of sugar. But if you're already eating a lot of sugar, get yourself some edibles. <laughs> So this would be the least of your concerns if you're already consuming a lot of sugar. But if you're trying to avoid sugar, I don't recommend getting edibles because edibles always have sugar, whether it be even the mints. There's sugar in mints. I mean, 
the candies, the gummies, those are very sugary, the cookies, the brownies, the Rice Krispies, it's all sugar stuff. So that's why we don't do the edibles. We did for a minute, but um, once we cut out sugar, we were like, oh, got to cut it out with our weed as well. Um, I actually found that I got stomach aches from the edibles. Something to do with the sugar just did not settle right with the weed. And then when we didn't do, when we did just concentrate, because we've done the pure THC, you can actually just get pure THC in like these uh, little syringes, and you can just put it on your finger and eat it like that. It's like, it's really sticky. It's just pure THC, like this sticky stuff, almost like a syrup. And you can put it on your tongue, it's so strong though, you'll get stuff done. Oh man, we do that once in a while, but it's very expensive. Because the thing is like, like $60 for the little syringe thing. So, um, you know, it gets expensive, but um, it's, it's worth it if it's for your health. That's what we view weed as our medicine. People think we do it for entertainment. We do it for that too. Weed is very fun, but it's primarily for health because I don't I don't spend money just on entertainment. I'm actually kind of a tight wad, um, so I would um, I would definitely cut out weed if it was just these start to hurt my. Um, I'm kind of one of those people that has like in between feet, like where sometimes certain shoes will be just a tad bit too tight, but if I were to go to the half size, it'd just be too big. You know, does it, some people have feet like that where you're like, man, you just, it never really, it's like, man, like, so I'm eight, I'm size eight, and eight, it, uh, so some eights are perfect, but on some it's just, just where you're like, eh, but if you go eight and a half, it's just so big, yeah, forget it. Okay, so, but, um, the weed is consider it medicine and then you will feel better about what you spend on it because it can replace all of your medicine we don't do any medicine no not even vitamins i feel that we get all of the nutrients we need from the organic food we eat and from the mineral water uh mineral water is really good for getting nutrients and then from the weed because weed actually has uh, you know the terpenes you get essential oils from there the same as um you get those some of those same terpenes from things uh, like in seasonings like um you know, uh, rosemary and thyme have some of the same terpenes that you see in weed. And um, those are actually just um, like ar aromas in a sense, like the aromas you think of. So what they are is the, um, the lavender, the mint, the citrus, and then the pine, like the earthy. So when you think of terpenes, those are the smells. And... Um, it's all the similar thing. Like, I feel like aromatherapy kind of came after they kind of outlawed weed. Like, I think it was originally, you know, the weed. Because when you get to experience weed, you really is the smells are so amazing. I just go there and I go, sniff it. And I used to think people were so weird when they talk about, oh, let me smell the weed. I was like, what is wrong with you? And now I'm like, oh, and it, it, it actually is so amazing. Like, it's healing even just smelling it because just getting that aroma in, up into your nostrils and stuff actually can start the healing, um, just smelling it. Um, and so what's important about weed is that you got the three things. You know, you got the THC, so you want to have a good THC level. You want to have CBDs. Those are the cannabinoids. That's the more healing part of weed. But all of it is healing, but CBDs are like the primary healing part. And that's what they extract that they give to children. You can get like the droplets and just have pure CBDs. And that you don't get stoned from. That's just the healing part. And then you have the terpenes, which are the other essential oil. And those are those like 200 different ones. So as you learn your weed, you'll figure out which ones you like. And, um... And it's amazing. Actually, so being legal, they've been able to just learn so much more. It's really cool, and I, I hope they federally make it legal soon. Who knows what's going on with all of this nonsense? This is just insane. So we'll see. But luckily, they left open the dispensaries here during this ridiculous epidemic. See, they had to because it's medical. I actually have a medical card. That's why they had to leave it open. I'm sure it's just like I wanted to close it. Um, unless he's invested in it, then he probably want it open. But if he's not personally invested, I'm sure he wanted it closed. But it's medical now, so they couldn't. Since the state deemed it medical, since his state deemed it medical, he couldn't shut it down when they said essential. So that was really cool because he's such a dick. He probably would have shut down the weed, and then we would have been screwed. So luckily for 420, we're able to still get weed in Las Vegas. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Jerry, Rich, are you out there? Why not? Okay.
when we out here. And then uh, I'll just reset the photo soon. <laughs> Take me out. Oh, let me turn around. Show me. See the Rolling Stones. You like that, you guys? Not to death. I'm not impressed. I'm not amused. I'm not confused. I'm not confused. I'm a grown man business, I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin', this is not for you. I'm a jail, my beat with the Kanye, yo. Your name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh, it's like I'm still a day yo, and it's been like that since the day yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out. Check it out.